Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Karen Goodfellow, uh, and I would like to uh, welcome you to today, March 14th, 2023's meeting of the Boston Art Commission. I'm the Director of Public Art in the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, and in that capacity, I'm also the Director of the Boston Art Commission. -y. Commission. Uh, let's all take a moment to update our names and pronouns and make sure we are muted. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting virtually. To ensure public access to the deliberations of the Boston Art Commission, the public can join this meeting through telephone and video conferencing. For those of you with us today, this meeting is being recorded and closed captioning is available and you should be able to access it at the bottom of your screen, but please, if you have any trouble locating the button, chat us for assistance. The Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture and the Boston Art Commission believe that public art is any artwork installed in publicly accessible spaces where they can be experienced by everyone for free. We engage in discussions about public art in Boston in order to foster the creation and collection of artworks that reflect the people, ideas, histories, and futures of Boston, which is located on the traditional homeland of the Massachusetts people and the neighboring Wampanoag and Nipmuc peoples. We acknowledge the atrocities committed against indigenous peoples all of the communities that have been subsequently harmed and the ways in which colonialism has created systemic oppression. We recognize the continuing presence of these communities and the indigenous peoples represented in the city's residents, in addition to those in the diaspora. We also recognize that Boston exists as a result of the forced labor and economic extraction from enslaved African Americans. For transparency and community input, artworks proposed for city of Boston property are reviewed and discussed at public meetings of the BAC on a regular and usually monthly basis. Working together with the public art team in the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, the BAC is an independent board composed of two ex officio and seven volunteer community members appointed by the mayor. The BAC has exclusive authority to approve and commission artworks intended to be added to the city's collection or placed on city property. Our meetings are generally on the second Tuesday of every month, like today, and we hope you'll continue to join us. We have a public uh, art team uh, dedicated in the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture that facilitates the BAC meetings and manages all phases, daily operations, and duties related to public art projects cited on or proposed for city property uh, in collaboration with the Boston Art Commission, community members, and colleagues at the City of Boston. Helping to facilitate this meeting are Sarah Rodrigo, Senior Public Art Project Manager, and Amber Torres, Public Art Project Manager. And we'll share our contact information in the chat. And I will pass to Chair Mark Pasnick. Okay, thanks, Karen. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm calling this public hearing to order at 4.36 p.m. Today, the Boston Art Commission is holding its monthly public meeting. We'll now take roll call of commissioners to confirm a quorum. After I state your name, commissioners, please say here. Camilo Alvarez. Here. John Andres. Here. Cara Elliott Ortega. Here. Robert Freeman. Here. Brian Hone. Here. Uh, and Kim Pinder. Here. Here. Did I miss anyone? I think I got everybody who's here. Okay, well, we have a quorum. It's been confirmed. Um, on the next slide, you will see uh, today's agenda, which is posted publicly on the city's website, boston.gov. Uh, we will now review meeting minutes from the February 14th meeting of the Boston Art Commission. Are there any comments or modifications any commissioners would like to make? I just want to confirm with Sarah, I sent you one change to include the time that we started the meeting. Did anybody else notice anything they'd like to recommend changing? Hearing none, I wonder if there's a motion to accept the minutes. I move to accept the February 14th minutes. Sorry, Bob. No, I'll second it. Okay, so thank you, John and Bob. Uh, I'll read off the roll call and say yes if you agree with the motion. Camilo? Yes. John? Yes. Para? Yes. Bob? Yes. Brian? Yes. Kim? Yes. And I'm a yes as well, so the motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Um, 
We will now move on to our first order of business. Karen, you want to start? Sure. Um, we have three presentations for review today. Uh, pictures of the year by various artists proposed by the Boston Press Photographers Association, a short-term installation in two locations, Jamaica Pond, in JP and the Boston Common downtown. And this will be a familiar project to you all. Uh, the relocation of the Lombard Lamp by Carl Borner on the Commonwealth Avenue Mall proposed by the Boston Parks Department. And the final acceptance of memory diffusion by Masari for the Boston Arts Academy in the Fenway. We have a few updates about commissions. We're advancing plans for the installation of a General Edward O. Gordine and Black Veterans Memorial. The artworks will be patinaed in the month prior to installation and Moak and the Parks Department are working on contracting for installation of the artworks, which will align with the completion of the park renovation in the late spring or early summer. The plaza that will house uh, Journey of My Soul, a memorial to Frederick Douglass by Mario Chiodo after a drawing by Paul Goodnight is at 25% design. The sculptures themselves are at the foundry awaiting casting and we are targeting a fall installation. Bookmarked by Stuart Schechter for the Mattapan branch of the Boston Public Library is in fabrication. The artist is working with the foundry to enlarge the artwork from the maquette and sculpt the images of the spines. We'll be visiting the foundry with the friends in a couple months once the artwork has advanced. On Saturday, March 18th, uh, from 12 to 2 p.m., um, please join us uh, at the DeWitt Center in Roxbury for a discussion and workshop with artist and designer Jenny Sabin, Poet Laureate Portia Oliwola, and public poetry advocate Elizabeth Bradfield. Portia and Liz are collaborators on the project uh, with Jenny, and together they are interested in gathering and featuring the voices of Roxbury community in the project. And we can share uh, a link to that in the chat if we haven't already. Uh, we also had uh, an artist talk that we neglected to add a photo of um, recently at the Roxbury Library, but which was really fantastic. Um, and it was moderated by Commissioner Pinder uh, and Holmes um, and artists Nikia Hill, Joe Wardwell and Sobek spoke. And it was a really lovely opportunity to talk to folks uh, at the library and in the community about the work that they all did. The artist team for the Engine 42 Commission are planning a community engagement event in Eagleson Square neighborhood in mid-April, and that's Ralph Helmick and Lemurchi Frazier working um, with um, Amber Torres who, and Sarah Rodrigo on planning that out. So that's very exciting. Resite is under agreement with the Coconut Grove Memorial Committee and working on the final design of Emergent Memory. And lastly, uh, I checked in with the executive director of the Dominican Heritage Memorial and they're in touch with the Brown Fund um, and still sort of figuring out the workings of uh, payments there. And I hope to have more information about next steps in the near future. When he sends maquettes and proposal for the Chinatown workers statues will be on display at the Pow Center in late March throughout April. For the project itself, we are actively vetting sites for the artworks and planning a community meeting later this spring to share sites and get feedback. The mural consultant contract was executed. Liza Quinones of Street Theory will be starting with us on March 22nd. Public art and design application has been updated and will launch soon. Uh, and I know um, some of you had asked about sort of improving that process. So we'd love to get your feedback if anyone's willing to give it a go. And we will be releasing a number of calls this spring, including commissions for new murals, calls for figurative works, for a city building on Court Street, and a call for an artist to create an artwork at the corner of Ruggles and Tremont Streets. Um, and moving on to existing collections, our collection photographer, Olivia Moon uh, Blaisdell has been photographing the existing collection. You can see some of her photographs on the right. We're expecting her to complete JP, Mattapan and Hyde Park by the end of March. In conversation with TBF and Parks about maintenance agreements for the Embrace, um, and we will hope to, you know, finalize that in the near future, both for regular maintenance and for any, any emergencies that may come up. And the way we're approaching this is really trying to find a holistic approach for all partners to be involved. Um, and so we can be responsive. And we have an update on the Monuments exhibit in Los Angeles. You approved a loan to LEX Art 
and Ellie Mocha of the Emancipation Group for this exhibit, um, which was scheduled to begin this fall. Um, last year, we shared a draft loan agreement with them, but had not received any edits or other documentation from the team. And yesterday, uh, Hannah Bernstein of LAX Art let us know that the exhibition has been postponed and we'll update you when we learn more. And um, as you know, our remote meetings were extended until March 31st, 2023. We don't yet have official word about whether or not there'll be another extension. Um, if this is not extended, we'll need an in-person quorum on April 11th and at subsequent meetings. However, the Boston City Council did recently pass an ordinance requiring all, that all commissions and board meetings continue to provide a remote access option for attendees and presenters. We are still trying to figure out what exactly this would mean for us, and I think there is still a a good chance um, for there to be another extension based on uh, what we're hearing from some folks and we'll be sure to update you as soon as we know. And I will pass to you, Mark. Thank you. Great, thanks, Karen. And thanks for using a great drawing of uh, Boston City Hall for me, thanks. Uh, we will now move on to the items for agenda for review, public testimony and commission vote. Here's how you can participate in today's meeting. During the meeting, please keep yourself muted. If you have technical difficulties during the meeting, you can ask questions in the chat and a member of staff will help you. After presentations and clarifying questions from the commissioners, the uh, chair may invite public testimony. If you'd like to participate, you can raise, use the raise your hand icon and staff will put you in a digital line for comment. You can also let staff know that you have a question in the chat if you're calling in, press star nine to raise your hand. Please remember to keep your comments on topic and brief. Uh, our goal is to make the meeting a good experience for all so that community members feel comfortable sharing their feedback and questions. Please be mindful of and respectful of other people's time when speaking so that other participants feel comfortable adding their comments. You can submit longer written testimony to BAC at Boston.gov. While you may disagree with other attendees' testimony, please do not interrupt them during their allotted time. Please keep questions and comments project specific. If you're called on, please state your name, title, program, and organization if relevant. With that, uh, we'll move on to the first presentation for review is final design of the short-term installation of the photographs of the year by the Boston Press Photographers Association. Sarah will introduce the project. Sarah. Thank you, Chair. The Commission may remember this exhibit from last year and from 2021 when the Boston Press Photographers Association first um, exhibited the picture of the year uh, displays in sites around Boston. I'm happy to introduce Brian Snyder, who presented to you last spring and is here again tonight to present this year's exhibition. Uh, Brian, welcome. Hey, uh, I hope you can hear me and this works. I'm actually out in on the Linway covering this storm, watching the waves not quite crashing over the the uh, side yet. Um, <laughs> the storm that kind of wasn't. Anyway, uh, we just finished the job, recently finished the judging of this year's contest. Uh, you've had, you guys should have all the pictures. Um, I guess the main thing that I take away from what came out of what the judges picked was something they they actually said. One of them, he's the director of photography at the Minneapolis Star Tribune, commented just on how, how what a great collection of pictures it was showing the region and, and sort of underlying the importance of journalists, photojournalists, recording the region and he, he he was really struck by it and I, I thought that was I mean it was very gratifying to hear you never know what they're going to take away from it and uh, you know that's a pretty high compliment to what we do so I don't have a lot to add it's going to look the same as past years um, just with the new images so I really think if you have questions let me know um, and I'm happy to answer them yeah, and I'll say, commissioners, you have all, I think it was 296 images or in a folder, <laughs> in your folders, if you want to peruse them. I remember last year, um, Commissioner Freeman was in one of them. Um, yeah, two years ago. Two years ago. I don't ago. think we have any commissioners this year. I didn't notice. <laughs> New category. Yeah. 
Brian, did you want to talk about the sites really quick? Because there's two sites um, this year, as in previous Yeah, years. sites are going to be similar to last year. JP, we love it. I thought it was amazing down there on JP. And, um, uh, you know, the engagement was tremendous. Watching people look at the pictures was just beyond gratifying. Um, Copley Square, I guess, is going to be under renovation or is under renovation. Um, so we're going to use the common instead. We're working with Paul at the Parks Commission you know, to make sure they're, we do what they want for their, because it's their space and their grass and stuff, but he's fantastic and he loves the exhibit. So um, he'll make sure we're in good shape there. But he's, he's, he's sort of guiding us to a spot over by the, the fountain whose name just eluded me. Um, so it'll sort of be in that area. That's what he's, he's suggesting and you know he's the expert so yeah adjacent to the brewer fountain brewer thank you <laughs> and then i think the last slide i don't know if you can see the slides brian because you're out on the road the last one is just some uh press and responses from previous years yeah and gbh is we're working with gbh in particular again this year to do some stuff on their do some you know talks and things on their programming um given where we are not in the pandemic or in the whatever we now call what we're in we need a new word um you know we're hoping to do some more engagement at the exhibits um you know that's the that's the sort of learning curve piece we're not sure what's possible at this point so um don't have any specifics but that's certainly a goal it's just i'm not sure what's possible right now um to actually do like talks at the exhibit with the photographers. Um, so we'll see what what what's possible. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Brian, for all your work on this and for bringing it before us. Uh, I'll open it up now to see if there's any questions from commissioners. Bob, do you have a question why you're not in a photo? <laughs> I, I just wanted to say the um, uh, the the uh, Jamaica Way is well trafficked, uh, Jamaica Pond, and there were a lot of eyes on the exhibit uh, last year, and we look forward to it again this year. Oh, Thanks, Brian. And I think you're quite close to the Embrace as well in the in the downtown location in the common. Exactly. So that'll yeah. Be a nice there. Yeah, we just want to make sure we work with the Parks Commission and other organizations there that do. You know, there's the Sunday church service out there. Um, you know, we just want to be sensitive to all that. So we're going to work with Paul to really make sure where we are is not going to interfere with what everyone else is doing. I mean, there's, you know, there's plenty of grass there and park and pathways, but we just want to really be conscious of all of that and um, not interfere with anyone. Brian, thanks so much for bringing this um, back to us again. I saw the installation in Copley Square and I thought it was sort of incredibly moving to see these pictures and sort of remember a year um, walking around and seeing some that were both funny, um, uh, emotional, and some that were also really troubling. And I found it to be a really compelling exhibition. The one thing that I remember from last year was some question about sort of sponsorship labeling and content. And I just want to make sure that that's brought again um, before the commission that the how these are designed and any uh, sort of sponsored logos or anything like that is uh, sensitively placed because it's our policy that we don't offer um, any spaces that look like it could be advertised or sponsored. Yeah, that hasn't changed. We it's the same layout. I we I think you may have in your your portfolio or your folder There's the some layout sample in there. mockups from the designer. Yeah, that hasn't changed at all. Okay. Um, it's really, you know, the it's really take this year's images and put them into basically the same template. Great. Thanks, Brian. And Brian, thank you for your presentation. Um, I just had a question about what happens to the images after the exhibition is completed. Do you is, is there a plan for that or how does that go? <laughs> well, Currently, some of them are still in my basement awaiting. We were trying to get them back to the photographers um, to have because they're really cool. Um, but 
that has been less than successful in some cases. And Brian's used U-Haul storage unit is in his basement is now currently storing some of them. Um, it's a, it's, you know, this is an all volunteer organization. So there's tremendous opportunity there. It's a question of time and um, time and effort. Um, and then coming back to you guys or your equivalent elsewhere, if we wanted to use them elsewhere. Um, but as of now, that hasn't happened. It, it's a lot for us between doing the contest we do a book that we publish every year of the images that's sort of a book record of the year. And then we do this and that's, that's like, that's a pretty full plate for um, a totally volunteer organization. So um, sorry, I don't have anything more specific. I totally understand why you're asking and, and would like there to be more, but it's, that's where it, where it meets reality is where we are. Yeah, no, thank you for that. That's we are also all volunteers, so we yes. get it. Um, yeah, you can. But, I mean, you yeah. know, they could be put on fences at construction sites, or I mean, there's lots of possibilities. It's just, it's just the reality of the time. For sure. Yeah, thank you. Someone Any suggested shower curtains. <laughs> uh, that's great. Any other <laughs> questions from commissioners? Hearing none, I'll see if there's any public comments before we move to a vote. Let's see, Michael. Um, Michael Reiskin from Jamaica Plain. I just wanted uh, two questions. One, uh, the timeline, one's the opening date and the closing date for the Jamaica Pond installation. Do you want to scroll to that, uh, Sarah? Do you want me to go find that? Oh, I've scrolled to it. It's May 31st through June 13th is the Jamaica Pond date. Okay, good, thank you. And uh, this is a slightly harder question. If you have the book uh, related to this, could that be um, on sale at the Jamaica Pond Boathouse, which is close by and has a snack shop? <laughs> we never it never occurred to us um that is a harder question we have a pretty limited print run based on what we use them for now we in the past have had extras that have gone into the equivalent storage to my basement and that's always seemed to waste so we've sort of streamlined that to every member gets a book um and then a few you know so the the print run is pretty limited um if there was demand, this print run certainly could be expended, extended. It it really never occurred to us. Uh, if you want to talk about that possibility, um, would be more than game. Um, would they? I'd like to. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'd like to see if it's available. I don't know if the uh, snack shop at the Pond Association at the Pond will be amenable to this, but I thought it'd be nice to turn them more into a gift shop. I'm certainly open to that. If you want to, I'm. If you can get me at. Um, I don't know. Does Sarah? I don't. I can put in the chat my email address. Um, and happy to talk further about that. Um, okay. Great. Great. Sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Michael. Uh, any other comments from the community? I guess my email address just went out to the world, but it already kind yes. of is. So. It's, it's been <laughs> That's fine now. It's on my, okay. it's, it is in the world. <laughs> Why don't we proceed to a motion? Is there a commissioner who'd like to make a motion? I can do that. I move that we approve the short-term installation of pictures of the year in Jamaica Pond and the Boston Common. Thank you, John. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Bob. So I'll read off the list. Please say yes if you agree with the motion. Camilo? Yes. John? Yes. Tara? Yes. Bob? Yes. Brian? Yes. Kim? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So the motion passes. Thank you very much, 
Brian, for all your work on this. And we look forward to seeing it in a few weeks or two awesome. months, I guess. Yes, thanks everyone. I would. I'm. I was going to stick around because uh, I always like the other presentations are always so interesting. But I think it's high tide, and I should um do my and job. It's starting to snow here, so maybe you've got a few photos yeah, ahead of you. Yeah, it's starting to snow, and the waves are crashing. So I should. Uh, That's do my good. Job. It's your. your <laughs> it's your time to be on. <laughs> thanks everyone. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the next presentation for review is the relocation of the Lombard lamp by Carl Borner on Commonwealth Avenue Mall. Uh, Amber Torres is introducing the presenters. Amber? Thank you. This project is a relocation of an artwork in our collection. The Lombard lamp was a gift from the city of Hamburg, Germany, where the original lamps designed by sculptor Carl Borner have graced the famous Lombard Bridge since the mid 1800s. This project is brought to us by the Boston Parks and Recreation Department as part of their renovation of the existing parcel on the Commonwealth Avenue Mall. Presenting tonight will be Amy Lene, project manager for Boston Parks, and Cassie Bethany, project manager for Weston and Sampson, the landscape architect consultant, excuse me, the landscape architecture consultant on the project. Amy and Cassie, welcome. Thanks, Amber, and thank you everyone for having us. Um, so this is uh, the Kenmore Block. Um, Boston Parks is currently engaged in a capital improvement project for this site, um, which is a unique one acre parcel, um, part of the Comab Mall right in Kenmore Square. Um, and Cassie will talk a little bit more um, about the site in a moment. Um, so I on the next slide, um, I think that's covering the project team. So again, just that's me, <laughs> Amy Lene, project manager, um, and Cassie with us tonight. And then, uh, or this afternoon, I should say. And then the next slide, uh, we look at the uh, the project schedule. So you can see that there's um, quite a bit of coordination and um, review on this project, um, including with the MBTA at Boston University, BTD, um, Boston Landmarks, um, of course, the Boston Arts Commission, and also we're working closely with the Friends of the Public Garden. Um, so we've held one community-wide meeting um, back in November, and then we're planning to hold one more probably in late April. Um, and we've also met with the residents of the abutting Kenmore Abbey building. Um, and so the design team is moving forward with the design development this spring, and we anticipate the project uh, we'll go out to bid in early fall and construction beginning probably late um, late winter or early spring of 2024. And so with that, I will turn it over to Cassie Bethany. Thanks, Amy. Um, can you advance to the next slide, please? Um, just to recount a little bit of the history. So the site was uh, not what it looks like today in the early 1900s. Um, it was um, started to be constructed in 1912 and was a sub a T platform by 1914. Um, and we have photo documentation that it was active through the 30s. I'm gonna skip to the next slide, slide please. And then we can see that uh, the early 1930s, it was still being used, but you actually in the upper right-hand corner, 1934, it's snow covered. So we surmise that at some point in the early 30s, it was closed, but the arch from that platform is still present. It's a, a wonderful relic um, that's in the landscape that we're preserving, improving and so on, um, that will continue through the improvement plan for this block. Uh, we start to see it take shape as a block, um, and this is an image of of that platform um, and people using it. And so, just the structure that uh, the tunnel structure underneath is significant, and that we're we're incorporating into our design plan. Next slide. So it started to take shape in the 1950s. We can start to see benches and pathway and so on and so forth. But the, in the 70s, upgrades were made to this block related to some tunnel infrastructure work that was done. And um, so you can see planting and brick and the it's more or less in the layout that it was 
it, it is today as it was in the 70s. The It's interesting to note that um, it said at the top of this presentation that the late did not arrive to Boston until the September of 1980. So this plan did not incorporate that look, that light and theoretically a home was found for it on this block when it arrived. Next slide. The lamp today is located on the western half of this block. Um, you can see Com Ave on both sides, inbound, outbound. We have Kenmore Street on the page west, technically also west side by the bus station and then Charles Gate West on the right side. It's located in the middle of the brick paving just in front of the archway that you saw um, from those historic photos. Next slide. And here is a view from Kenmore Street. You can see the light is located just in front of that arch. Next slide. And here's the lamp closer up. Um, so the, the artist, as mentioned, was Carl Borner. And the, um, the people of Hamburg, Germany, dedicated this, presented the Lombard lamp to the city of Boston in the, in the 80s for Boston's 350th birthday. It's an ornate cast iron and aluminum street lamp and a replica of the historic streetlights that are on the Lombard Bridge in Hamburg, Germany. It has a lavish base, as you can see, composed of cherubs, garlands, and other decorative features. It's hollow inside, um, but it's 15 feet high and weighs more than 12,000 pounds, and it supports five globe-shaped luminaires. It's also interesting to note that Hamburg dedicated, dedicated lamps of this kind to other cities, including Chicago, New York City, and Houston. Next slide. So our improvement plan is shown here. We are um, shifting the circulation around within this plaza space to provide gathering space right where that lumbar lamp currently sits. And we're bringing the the really the vision and intent for this block is to make it feel like it's a part of the rest of the mall. If it is fairly disconnected at the moment with the Bowker overpass on the east side. And so that central ally that is very typical of Com Ave Mall will be brought in some form and fashion to this block, uh, minding the tun tunnels and subsurface conditions that we're dealing with. And so in thinking about the Lombard lamp and this intention for bringing more prominence to the archway in the middle of the block. We wanted to give the Lombard lamp a home within this block that it doesn't currently have. So we have a plan for that that mirrors an installation on the other side of the Boker overpass that I'll mention in a moment. Next slide. So you can see a view of the arch as it looks today and you can see the Lombard lamp on the right side of this image. Next slide. In the proposed condition, we would be proposing to relocate the Lombard lamp to the eastern side of the block so it would be removed in this condition and then this arch becomes a focal point of a flexible gathering space that can be used for events um, annual events or so on, but also can be occupied for um, lunch or gathering or other things um, on a daily basis. And we have seen that space used for our installations in the past. There was an installation that we, we occupied while we were doing the master planning for this project in 2019. And so we felt that having this flexible paved outdoor space is critical to supporting an arts vision for this block. Next slide. And then here's the view uh, along Charles Gate West, looking towards this corner that would receive the Lombard light lamp. Next slide. And then a view of it located along the sidewalk. So it's set in about 20 feet 
but it would have a home within a planting area um, surrounded by granite curb. It would it would live along this block and create an entrance into this into the block. And we're looking at the leaf Erickson just opposite the Boker overpass as the mirror to this. And so then there becomes a similar language of our installations along the mall of this kind um, and, and creates that language and ties this block to the rest of the mall. I believe that should wrap it up. Um, if there are any questions, please feel free and we're happy to go back into anything that needs more discussion. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation and interesting to learn about this particular monument in the city that I didn't know about. Um, I Maybe I'll start us off with one question. You said that it's located in a planted zone in the future, that that's the plan. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Uh, given that it's on hardscape right now, to move it into a planted zone might potentially conflict with reading the uh, the panel that's part of the work. So I'm curious about that decision. We were looking at the leaf Erickson and how it's sitting in a planted area. And so we had originally thought about planting surrounding this space to ground it. Um, we'd be interested in the commission's thoughts around planting or no planting and would advise based on your guidance. Okay, we may, other commissioners might have some thoughts, but I, I would be concerned about not being able to read the, there's a plaque at the base there, correct or no? Is that a little plaque? There, there? is. So I think any planting that we do provide would be lower than that plaque. So it could be ground, it would really only be ground cover, cover ultimately, since that plaque sits fairly low to the ground. Um, yeah. But it, yeah. It's, you couldn't you couldn't then walk in next to it and look at it. I mean, that's sort of what I think is maybe for me, uh, that, that would be why my, I have my question, whether it would be better off that it's on a hardscape surface uh, mm -hmm. the way it currently is, so that people could circulate around it and sort of engage with it, uh, unless you're thinking that you want it to be removed from that kind of engagement for a particular reason? No, I don't, I don't know if we've, we've gotten to that yet. Um, okay. There are, there are other statues along the mall that have, I've worked on most of the statues along the mall, um, doing lighting installations, uh, up lighting the statues. And another treatment that we've done is a granite set surround. And so you can still like have a have access to it, but it does create. I think the important thing is just to like set it on a space that gives it um, a home that's not just the rest of the paving around the like the walkway space that it actually has a dedicated zone to yeah, it. Something that identifies it as as a particular place. Exactly. Okay. Other questions from commissioners. I think I would agree with you, Mark. And even if um, if we go back one slide, maybe I think it was uh, there is a there's a slide somewhere maybe forward where I think somebody had placed something at the base of the piece or kind of around it, and it almost looked like flowers, um, which kind of like shows a level of engagement with the piece, which is kind of nice. Uh, here we go, right here. They kind of like little plantings at the base of it. Um, I don't know, you know, what that's from or who did that or anything about that, but. Um, I mean, that's just kind of a nice moment. And I think um, I would agree with Mark. Well, perhaps we could offer a suggestion that it could still be in a field, but as long as the face is at the curb line, maybe, or something like that, it doesn't have planting in front of the plaque, that it could be part. It looks like if you go back to the plan that you were showing it kind of in the middle of a field, and I wonder if it could be at the edge of it, and you'd have to turn the, uh, oh, no, I guess you'd have the plaque in the same orientation, but just sort of bring it to the edge of the planted field rather than uh, in the middle of it. It, uh, might, it might answer the concern that I have that the plaque would no longer feel like it's something that people can engage with. 
Because it is low, you're right. And it's a little bit already hard probably to read because it's so low. So putting it a little further away from you in a in a planted space might detract from that. Other other questions from commissioners? Yeah, I think it would actually also even make it easier for maintenance because if it's planted on grass, the grass would need to get cut and I know damage would happen and that kind of fine tuning can be, you know, egregious sometimes on a sculpture. I'm wondering if, what kind of, I mean, if if it's, if how, what it looks like at night, does it, it light, it's a lamp. So I imagine that that could also provide more engagement for maybe a bench nearby it at night or something like that. Yeah, that's great. I think um, we have, so we do have some benches that we're planning on around that area. So I think that's that's a way to engage. And then we actually haven't seen it lit um, at night. And I think we would seek to light it as part of this effort. So we'd restore it and light it and make sure it's operating. And when you say light it, you mean the actual lamp would work, not that it's illuminated by something else. Correct. Yeah. Oh, great. Other comments or questions from commissioners? Hearing none, how about members of the public? Hearing none, maybe we could move to a motion then. And uh, just remind me, what, are, what kind of motion are we looking for here? I think we, we're we're seeking. Well, sorry if I'm interjecting, but that I might think be we're a, a Karen question. If, uh, she can answer. What was the? Uh, I think answer. approval for the movement. So the relocation. Okay, so this doesn't go through two phases of design. This is an approval. Correct. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. So would somebody like to make a motion? I can make a motion. I'll move to approve the relocation of the Lombard lamp on Commonwealth Avenue Mall. Could we put a proviso in there about the, um, ensuring that its location allows for visual access of the plaque directly from uh, a, a paved surface? So moved. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, so is there a second to that? I'll second that. Okay, thank you, Camilo. Um, so if, as I read down the list, please say yes if you agree with this motion. Uh, Camilo? Yes. John? Yeah. Ara? Yes. Bob? Yes. Brian? Yes. Kim? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So the motion passes. Thank you so much. And we're excited to see how this, uh, to take it out of the middle of the site and really put it in a place where people will see it, I think is a great, great move for the city. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Next up, we have again one of our favorite tasks, which is accepting a work of art into our permanent collection. Um, uh, the final presentation will be, uh, I think, from Sarah. Sarah's going to present to us. Thank you, Chair. Hi, this slide may look familiar to you all since we had a final acceptance last month as well. Um, in September of 2019, the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture and this commission released a call to artists for two new public artworks for the new Boston Arts Academy facility, which was then in design. The review committee, which included staff and student representatives from BAA, BAA alumni, public facilities representatives, and a member of the design team, as well as Commissioner Freeman and the late Commissioner Fifeman, recommended that the BAC commissioned local artist collective Masari for the interior artwork. They were approved in March of 2020 their preliminary design was approved in March of 2021 and their final design in November of that same year. And we do have a couple of members of the Masari team here um, 
listening to me talk about them. <laughs> and the artwork installation was completed in September of 2022 in time for the opening of the new building. On the screen, you can see images of the Boston Arts Academy, including renderings from the architecture team, Perkins Eastman and Wilson Butler Architects, showing the interior artwork site and a site map showing the school's location in the Fenway neighborhood. We worked closely with Public Facilities Department on this project and appreciate their work, as well as the collaboration of Lee Kennedy, the GC for the project. I'd also like to give a little shout out to Tom Saylor and his team at Design Communications Limited, who Masari brought on board to help make memory diffusion a reality. We have shared all the accessioning documents for this project with you in your folders. Since this is a new media project, there is a significant amount of documentation, including project narratives, all the prior presentations, a lot of technical data, warranty information, and maintenance recommendations, among other things. For this review, I'll share a bio of the artist, read a descriptive narrative of the artwork that they shared while showing you the submitted photographs, and then we'll switch over to a quick video so you can see the piece in action if you haven't seen it in person already, and then finally speak briefly about future maintenance. So, the Masari team that created Memory Diffusion includes studio co-founders and principals Ryan Edwards and Sam Ogerstrom Lang, technical director and media artist Jeremy Stewart, design director Caleb Hawkins, studio manager Grace Foe, technical assistant Odie DeSmith, and Nellie Kate, operations assistant. Masari Studios is a Boston-based transdisciplinary media arts studio creating artworks through research, inquiry, and expression. Masari artists take inspiration from places and environments, embedding concepts and fresh techniques into intentional awe-inducing artwork. And now I'm going to read you the artwork summary, which was provided, and it's in your folders. High schools are built to be places where students can learn and make long-lasting memories. But what about the physical space itself? Do the walls, the floors, and furniture retain their own memories of all the people who pass through? Masari Studios' groundbreaking new multimedia artwork, Memory Diffusion, installed permanently in the main atrium of the New Boston Arts Academy, ruminates on what it means to have, collect, and share memories while using state-of-the-art technology to learn and improve on its work. As part of the everyday landscape for an art school, the creative team behind Memory Diffusion questioned how an artwork could evolve over the years and mirror the vibrancy and diversity of activity in the school. Through research, inventive technologies, and a keen interest in the concepts of memory developed by French philosopher Henri Bergson, Masari set out to answer these questions and offer new speculation through this contemporary artwork. Anchored by a 20-foot dynamic LED screen, a custom sculptural lighting design is suspended from the ceiling above. The LED fixtures extend the display of the screen from the wall and into the two-story space as a grand entry into the school. These features are activated and accompanied by a real-time visual system. Memory diffusion uses camera input to perceive the environment in front of it. Using state-of-the-art machine learning techniques, custom software, and real-time graphics, the piece constantly absorbs what moves in front of it, compositing and rendering those stored images, memories, as a reminder and impressionistic reflection on what came before. I hope you can all see this video. Yes, we can.
And I just want to talk very briefly <laughs> about um, the artwork and future maintenance. Memory Diffusion has a large number of hardware components that are connected and networked to bring together the video display, lighting fixtures, cameras, and software. Masari included extensive documentation for our records. And I'm sharing a very small portion of the overview here on this slide, just to give the commission a sense of the complexity of the project and the detail, the level of detail they provided us. Um, we will continue working with them on maintenance um, of this project and uh, leaning on them as a local firm to help us with any troubleshooting, which they've already been actively doing. Um, so with that, I just want to note that I see that Ryan Edwards is here, which is great. Um, I think Grace Foe is here as well. Um, and did I feel that Caleb, I think Caleb Parker came in too. Mm -hmm. Came in as well, which is wonderful. I just want to thank you all for being here um, tonight, despite the weather and travel and all sorts of other things. And I don't know if chair if it would be appropriate for them to speak up or if you wanted to yeah, maybe if they would like to say a word or two that would be great i'll just say thanks this uh process and the um journey which has now been over a couple of years to to make this a reality has been a joy we're super proud and the um i think most of all the the reaction from the students and the staff that we've been privy to has been um, really, really powerful. So we're excited to see how it becomes an ongoing part of, of life at the Boston Arts Academy. Great, Grace, any comments from you? Oh, just also saying thank you. It's been um, really an incredible project and just so much fun seeing the students interact with it and just watching it all come together. It's really been um, like a dream to see it go from the renderings to the final product. And Caleb, I hear you're on the road. Uh, do you want to say a word? I am. Uh, I'm hoping that I can be heard clearly. I'm in a busy airport, but again, just echoing the same level of gratitude. It's been quite a privilege to be working on a project like this, especially in the city of Boston. And um, I know it might be seemingly a complex project, but in the type of artwork that we do, it's really exciting to blaze new ground for the types of pieces that can be brought to life in the city that we all enjoy and love to see activated. So again, just sharing a big thanks to everybody who supported this project throughout the way. And, uh, you know, a huge, huge thanks to the team, obviously, and uh, the city and all the collaborators that we had have been paired with. But uh, again, thank you. Great. Um, so I'll open it up to any comments from commissioners. Bob, do you want to kick it off since you uh, have been part of this for quite a long time? I sure would like to say a few words. I, I know the people um, uh, from Asari here and they were thanking us. We are the ones that should thank you. Um, you know, I was going to say three cheers. Um, and then I was uh, privileged enough to visit the installation today, this morning, and four cheers isn't even enough. <laughs> I was floored. Um, it is magnificent. It does everything that you all proposed it to do. I had the opportunity to interact with some of the students. The students were coming out of class when I was there. Um, and just at random, I said, what do you think of this? And, and they gave you the best uh, endorsement. Super, super cool. Smiles on their face as they said. It. Um, and it is more than super cool. And I thank you all for you know being really persistent with making this happen. And and I it, it, the the sculpture itself is magnificent. To have it all of a sudden, you know project these memories of movement and music. I I hear um, is just something so wonderful about what you all have created. And I just wanted to say four cheers. Um, I, I, I'd also like to um, just thank uh, Sarah who, um, who was there to help us and, and helped us along the way. And of course, George Feifel, who's no longer with us, who um, certainly helped me 
Um, it was my first project and I really appreciated his advice along the way. So I think of George every time I think of this project. That's a good note to make too. I think George is very present in this kind of project and it's a, you know, an expanding territory for us that George, I think, set us up uh, dealing with uh, the cyber arts world. And it's great to see something so full and rich in that uh, be so successful after these years. So thank you to the team from me as well uh, and to Sarah for <laughs> negotiating all of these complexities. Uh, any I other commissioners? Oh, Chair, go ahead. If I could jump in for a second and just say that it was an incredible pleasure to work on this project and that Brian and Caleb and Grace and their whole team um, were just real troopers at different points um, and really saw it through. And it was just really a privilege to be part of seeing them realize this vision. So thank you. Thank Great. you all. That's nice to hear. Um, any other commissioners want to make a comment? It's hard to follow Bob on that, but. How about Bob, would you be interested in making the honor of making the uh, motion? Um, Mark, Mark, do we need oh, to open it up to the public? Um, we don't normally. No. With, okay, uh, just making sure. With, uh, acceptance. There's nothing to discuss anymore. <laughs> 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 Mark, I'd be happy to make um, um, the uh, recommendation that we accept uh, the Masari's Memory and Diffusion Art uh, Installation uh, at Boston Arts Academy into the collection of Boston. Great. Thank you for that. Do I hear a second? I second. Okay. Thank you, Kim. Uh, so I'll read off the list, and if you agree with this wonderful motion, please say yes. Uh, Camilo? Yes. John? Definitely yes. Tara? Yes. Bob? An enthusiastic yes. Brian? Yes. Kim? Yes. And I am an enthusiastic guest as well. So the motion passes unanimously. Congratulations to everybody involved in this and to the whole team at Massery. Uh, really, and, and special from me to uh, Caleb, who was my student many years ago, dealing with issues of technology just emerging. It's so wonderful to see how your career has blossomed and how this represents part of that and, and the entire team that you worked with. Uh, I just, it's amazing. So thank you for gifting, uh, bringing this into Boston. All of you. Okay. Uh, last item, I think, is our adjournment. So I wonder if somebody would like to make a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Thank you, John. I hear a second. I'll second. second. Uh, was that Camilo that got you at the buzzer? I think so. Okay. Uh, if you agree with the motion, then uh, say yes. Camilo? Yes. John? Yes. Tara? Yes. Bob? Yes. Brian? Yes. Kim? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So the motion passes. We are officially adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for a great meeting and uh, some great artwork coming our way and already our way. So thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you. Congrats.